On today's show, Isaac and I are going to break down the Dallas Mavericks' massive win over the Golden State Warriors. All I care about is Boban's ejection. I'm ready to rage. Talk about that. Talk about Luka going off in the third and more on Locked On Mavs right now. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co host, contributor at Mavs.com, the winning wonder, the one more thinking. Uh, what you got for me, Isaac Harris? Well, first off, uh, we're going to talk about the big win uh, here in a little bit. But uh, more importantly, one of our our good friends here in Dallas, a friend of the podcast uh, who, gosh, I don't know how many times John has been uh, on our pod uh, for a while. And uh, he's been on and, uh, you know, he's a writer at The Ringer. A lot of you guys follow uh, Jonathan Charks uh, on social media and Twitter and follow all of his potting and writing. Uh, But John... Recently, uh, if you've seen his Twitter, uh, he tweeted out a few days ago and made that public that he's been uh, diagnosed with cancer. And uh, we just want to lift him up today. And, uh, you know, I know John has been uh, in my prayers. He's been in Nick's prayers. And uh, he means uh, a lot to us. And he means a lot to uh, Mavericks fans, Mavericks media, seeing him. um, Yeah. And all of that, uh, I got the chance to spend uh, some time with him a few days ago uh, back last week and uh yeah um yeah (laughs) um john is is a great guy he is married and uh, he has a a a little one a little one over one and uh little jackson and man yeah they're uh an awesome family and uh, we just want to say uh if you would like to support them we're actually going to uh, talk mention that right now uh, and actually, we probably put it in the description of the pod. Yeah, so they have a they have a website right now. They have a Caring Bridge website where they are giving updates and things like that. So if you want to know more updates about Jonathan Charks and about you know his status and all that, you can follow that website. We'll put it in the link in the description of this podcast. And uh, yeah, if you want to also donate, you can donate to them directly. Do not I don't I wouldn't donate through this website, but uh, yeah, Isaac, where do they where should they donate? Yeah, you can uh, uh, donate straight to their family at MK Charks. So uh, if you want to spell uh, the last name on that, that will be a T. Okay, so if you have Venmo, it's M K T J A R K S. Yeah. So at MK Charks, if you would like to send them something, send a gift uh, to them. John, he recently started chemo uh, a few days ago. So he is starting uh, this journey. And uh, yeah, if you are the praying type, if that is your thing, please lift up his family. All the updates and stuff, you can go through that website. Uh, that is John's story to tell. So I don't want to tell uh, or go into all the details on that. But uh, John's a, a, a good friend. And uh, we wish him the best and we're praying for him. I just texted him yesterday about uh, the Mavericks. It was funny. Uh, I, I texted him after they beat uh, the Lakers. I said, Mavs are streaking, baby. <laughs> and uh, he wrote me back the next morning uh, after the uh, the Kings loss. Or, yeah, he wrote me back after that and was like, hey, uh, that lasted long. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, the math streak, uh, yeah, lasted long. But love you, John, and yeah. I love Melissa Jackson and the and the Charks crew, and uh, I can't wait to see you back rolling. Absolutely, and you know we don't want to start the podcast off on a you know down note. We're not trying to do this just to you know oh let's you know bring it down or whatever. But uh, he's a person that means a lot to us, personal friend of both of us. You know, we say friend of the pod to, to a lot of people. We say it to Cuban, you know, whoever. But Jonathan Chark is a guy we've actually, you know, hang out, hung out with, spent some time with. I was part of a small group with him and all this kind of stuff. Like just a, an incredible person. And if I've thought about anything, 
during all of this, just in, you know, hearing this was happening and then in, in getting, you know, messages from him and he's just, you know, he just asks how you're doing and doesn't really want to talk about what's going on with him, which you totally understand, but life is not promised. And, um, that's a phrase that I've heard so many times in my life. And if you're a Christian, people say that to you probably every day. And it just is so cliche at this point, but it's true. Don't take life for granted. Do not take your life for granted because you do not know what is going to come the next day. All of a sudden, you know, Charks's life has changed, completely changed. And so uh, we're going to talk the rest of this podcast about the Mavericks for sure. And we'll go a little bit long because we, we talked about this for a while. But uh, sometimes life gets real. And this is a moment where it's getting real. And if some of you are struggling with it and are dealing with the thought of your own, uh, like I am, dealing with the thought of your own mortality, uh, you can reach out to either of us. Reach out to Isaac. He uh, is really great with this stuff. I am less good than Isaac, but I'm uh, an open ear to listen to anybody that has issues or has, you know, um, thoughts or things that they want to talk out. And so DM us on Twitter, let us know. And uh, yeah, that's not an engagement thing or anything. It's literally, we want to help people and help you guys out. So, uh, all right, let's move on a little bit and talk about a thing that Charks loves a lot. And that's the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks get a win over the Golden State Warriors, 133 to 103. It was not even that close, Isaac Harris. Let me just run through a couple numbers for you here. Mm, please. The Dallas Mavericks uh, <laughs> are the only team. This is the craziest one that I found in the middle of this game. The Dallas Mavericks are the only team in the NBA to hold another team under 30 points in a half, in the first half. Wow. Twice. And no one else has done it at all. No one else has ever done it. And the Mavericks have done it twice now. They did it to the Clippers back in December, if you remember that huge 51-point win. And then if you – this game, obviously, tonight against the Warriors, they held them to 29 points. The Mavericks have also held the Heat to 31 points in the first half back in January, January 1st, that New Year's game. Uh, and the only other team in the NBA that has ever – this season held the team under 30 points in the first half. The Brooklyn Nets of all teams wow. held the Indiana Pacers to 30 points back in February. So the Mavericks have held the team under 30, under 32 points three times so far this season. And only the Brooklyn Nets and the Philadelphia 76ers have done it this season. So Mavericks best defensive team in the NBA <laughs> like, hey. on some nights. <laughs> I know this game tonight had to help their defensive uh, stats across the board. That was just an absolutely wild stat uh, to look at. The Mavericks have held a team under 32 points three times, and the only other two teams to do it are Sixers and Nets, and they only did it once. How, uh, how much does that Clippers game in this game skew some of the defensive stats? Oh, I bet. I mean, we're, we're like – almost 60 games in. So we're pretty, I mean, the, the numbers, it's not small sample size theater anymore, but yeah, yeah, absolutely crazy. The Mavericks defensive rating in this game, by the way, only 101. So it's not like it was an insane defensive performance mm. that fourth quarter, that third quarter, that second half basically helped the Warriors a lot in that. But yeah, it's just a crazy stat. The other stat is that the Dallas Mavericks also held the, uh, or they, they had a 28 to zero scoring run in this game which is just an absolutely wild stat. Uh, according to Elias Sports, ESPN Stats and Info, it's the first 28-0 run in the NBA since 2017 when the Knicks went on a 28-0 run against the Raptors. Who was even on the Knicks in 2017? Um, uh, let's see. Who was, who was on the, who was on the uh, Our boy. Chris Osporzingis and Tim Hardaway and That's Trey right. Burke. And Trey Burke. Oh, Trey Burke. Oh, that's who it is. It's Trey Burke. Was he part? I went, I need to know now if he was part of both of those runs or if Tim Hardaway was part of both of those runs because that's possible. That's absolutely wild. So, yeah, 28 to run first time since 2017. The largest run this season for a team, by the way. And, uh, yeah, just a crazy game for the Mavericks. Luca went on just a wild streak in the third quarter. It just seemed like everything he was throwing up was going in. You yeah. were hoping he was going to be able to go off and get his, you know, career high, which is 46. He didn't get it, got to 39, but 23 in the in the third quarter for Luca, and it was just, I mean, it's one of those games like the Clippers game where you just look and say, yeah, the Mavericks did some things right, but the Warriors did more things wrong, right? This is more about yeah. the Warriors, I think, than about the Mavericks just being a dominant team. It was just a, you know, a perfect storm of the Warriors just not missing, like not hitting any shots. And the Mavericks just not hitting any. Like there was a moment in the second quarter with five minutes and 38 seconds to go where Curry 
missed a point blank layup on the left side of the rim. And then Ubre missed a point blank put back on the right side of the rim. Just like nothing was going right for this Warriors team. Yeah, but I don't think it's 50 50. I think it's more of like a 60 40. I do think Dallas okay. deserves a deal. <laughs> no, well, I think some of these games we can watch and say, all right, you played basically the same game you've been playing. They just missed shots. And I think it is and like it a 50 50. But they did make changes. And I think you did see the energy completely different than the Sacramento game. I think you did see a game plan that Rick Carlisle credited a lot after the game in his media session to starting right off the bat saying Jamal Mosley credit to him for this defensive game plan. And I thought, I mean, we'll talk more about Trey Burke, but coming up after break, let's, let's talk more about this defense and what adjustments they made. Absolutely. We'll talk about that. But first, we have to talk about Michelob Ultra, the Ultra Player of the Week. I mean, it probably has to be Luca, right? I feel like every single week we talk about Luca. So I'll throw that up as a nomination for Trey Burke, maybe, though. Trey Burke's had two games this week. And I mean, we're only at Wednesday right now. So in the two games this week, he's actually played pretty good. The Mavericks are four and one in that Luca Doncic has played in all, fi- in all uh, five of those games. They're four and one. Luca, 28 points a game, nine assists. Eight rebounds, shooting 47, 35, and 75. Pretty good. Trey Burke played in two games, 13 points for him uh, on average. Porzingis played in two games. Let's see, Dorian Finney Smith, man, he might mm. be up there because he's shooting 52% this week from three. Love this guy. Dorian Finney Smith is absolutely crazy. Let's see. He's 14 of 27, hit the second most threes on the team. Luca is 17 of 48 for threes this week. So Dorian may be up there for me because Dorian just, we love Dorian. And now he's finally hitting his threes and he's on a really hot streak. And he's also plus 51. He has the second highest plus minus on the team. The highest plus minus on the team over this week. Who do you think it is? Willie. Willie Colley Stein. He is plus 67 this week. I think this Warriors game helped out a lot. He, he was, was a plus 41. Tonight, yeah, he was a so. plus 40. He was a plus 40. That's why I guessed him. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely that. Uh, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. 2.6 cards, 95 calories. Joy creates success. Enjoyment isn't the end game, Isaac. It's the whole game. Also, got to ask you a question about Michelob Ultra. Mm, I'm ready. Are you happy because you win? Or do you win because you're happy? Tonight for the Dallas Mavericks, they're happy because they win, because the Mavericks got the win. Go celebrate Michelob Ultra. Enjoy it responsibly. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into the rest of this game. So the Mavericks, uh, what's the big change? So one of the big changes they made was the starting lineup. Porzingis is out again. Richardson out again. And so they decided to go with Trey Burke as the starter. And honestly, Trey Burke looked like, not offensively in the first half, but defensively looked like that guy we saw in the bubble. Remember Trey Burke in the bubble playing defense? Like he just would always try. He would be right in guys' grills. He His foot speed can just stay with anybody. And he was trying so hard, and I thought that he was a big key. He stripped Steph Curry like three times in this game. Yeah. Uh, and Steph was just way off, it seemed like, in this game. But uh, and give credit to Trey Burke, I guess, because he was I think really they trying frustrated hard. him a little bit. Yeah, I think this is the best defensive game I've ever seen of Trey Burke. I think it's better than the bubble. I don't know what Mosley and those guys, you know, pumped into him before this game of like, we want you to go out there and show, show, like, show them that you can play defense. Like, you're not just the scorer coming out of Michigan that we all think back to the big shot he made in the tournament. Like, he can play defense and how he pestered. Steph tonight, I thought was fascinating. I I did not know he had that in him. And that was a pleasant surprise. Absolutely. Trey Burke with his back up against the wall, especially like in the bubble. I if I if you remember back, he was like not on a team, right? He wasn't like on a roster. He yeah. didn't have a guaranteed contract. And so he was just out there. The Mavericks picked him up and brought him in. And he's kind of playing for his NBA life, right? Like if he doesn't play that well, how many times is he gonna get a, a lot more opportunity for a full season contract like this? And he's been out of the rotation for a while for the Mavs. And so, again, his back is up against the wall, and he's coming out and performing. I I think Trey Burke with his back up against the wall, and I wonder if Mosley or somebody used that as motivation, or even just Trey Burke himself is like, dang, like I got to make some kind of impact, have some kind of you know big game here and show out in some way, which is why he's chucking up a bunch of shots too. He took a bunch of shots in this game, and especially against the Kings too, which he, he played really well in that game. 
but he's taking a bunch of shots because he's playing for his NBA life in a way. Especially since JJ Reddick came in, you know, Rick yeah. talked about this briefly after the game. He mentioned it. He's like, yeah, ever since, you know, we traded for Reddick, Trey's been basically out of the rotation. He hasn't been playing at all. He was out before then, but yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of like cement. Like as soon as they got, you know, Reddick in, in the trade, it's like, all right, well, Trey's never going to play again. And bam, was I wrong? Like, I mean, Trey played against the Kings. He played, you know, decently well. He played great. And I say he played great in this game when he only, he went two of 13 from the field. Yeah, he only right. had eight <laughs> points. It's like, when have you ever, when has anyone ever pointed out that Trey Burke had a great game and he had under 10 points? Because Trey Burke could score and we know he can score. So, and in, in the bubble, he was kind of playing that, you know, that secondary scorer to Luca. He was, you know, all of that. So, I just I was just fascinated tonight by how he played Steph, how he fought around screens and stuff, how he he stripped him a few times. And now it wasn't just all Trey because a part of the game plan them bringing that double team against Steph, and that that's honestly what just fascinates me with Steph and just his greatness. And I know he only had twenty seven tonight, but teams try to do crap like this against them because the rest of the roster sucks outside of Draymond. So. And he Ooh, still man, this roster is brutal. Everybody yeah. that was like, "Oh, Mavs bringing Kelly Oubre," like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if that guy is. <laughs> he's the difference maker. I don't. I don't like Kelly Oubre as option number three. Kelly Oubre is option, uh, you know, five or he, six. Well, he was option six on this Warriors team. So, <laughs> and this Warriors team, you know, has two problems, right? Their offensive problem is that, or their defensive problem is that Draymond Green can't be everywhere. And their offensive problem is that Steph Curry can't be everywhere, right? Like they literally yeah. just rely on those two guys to do so much on both ends so much. And Draymond had some really good defensive plays in this game. It's just that no exactly. one else could defend really. Uh, and speaking of the Warriors, man, uh, this after the game, uh, this play or this, uh, this statement from Kerr was just I thought brutal, like just brutal listening to him. Uh, our guy, Wes Goldberg from the Lockdown Warriors podcast tweeted this out. Hey, so. Steve, um, in the first quarter and then into the second quarter, your guys had a scoring drought of about nine minutes. Ooh. What is that feeling when you're, when you're getting shots, but nothing is going in? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not that concerned about – uh, a nine minute scoring drought. I'm concerned about defense. I'm, I'm concerned about a level of uh, intensity and, and preparation and, and competitiveness. That's, um, that's what was missing. And, uh, and I'm the, I'm the head coach. So, um, you know, I, I did not have them ready to play clearly, um, you know, biggest game of the year. And uh, we, we, it was over before it started. So really, really disappointing. Um, but we, that was the comment right there I wanted to play. It was the biggest game of the year, and it was over before it started. Like, what? This game was huge for the Warriors because they could have won the tiebreaker over the Mavericks with this win, and they didn't, and the Mavericks did. So now the Mavericks have the tiebreaker over them. They have the tiebreaker over the uh, Grizzlies, over the Clippers. Or no, the, yeah, the Clippers and the Lakers. Over and the have, Lakers, baby. That's what I was have, waiting on. They have a bunch of tiebreakers. So uh, the one – the one they don't have is Portland. That's the only, or they they have the they have it over Denver too. So it's yeah. the, literally the only tiebreaker they don't have is the one they might need. <laughs> it's against Portland, but uh, this was wild that this team, this Warriors team, it was their biggest game of the season. They just came out looking like that. They came out looking like the Mavs against the Kings. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was wild, man. That first quarter was insane, and you know Draymond. <laughs> Draymond's just such a fascinating player to watch, like especially this year. He doesn't like, shoot. He doesn't shoot. He won't. It's like he doesn't care about shooting. No. And he had one shot attempt in this game. He's he is good at defense, but I will say this: I think some of Dallas's defensive game plan was great this game because if you go back to one of those earlier Warriors games uh, against the Mavericks earlier this year, Draymond just torched them with passes. It's like they had cuts for days, and it felt like the Warriors had layup after layup after layup in one of those early matchups, and they adjusted a little bit. They stayed home a little bit. They're like, hey, we're going to dare you to shoot. Let's cut off these you know, these passing lanes. Let's try to stay home on some of these cutters and all of that. So I think they kind of – you know, that was another part of that game plan that I just want to praise on. Y'all know we love Jamal Mosley, and I'm just going to keep on praising him because 
he should be a head coach in this league, but I don't want him to leave Dallas at the same time. So Dorian mentioned Mosley after the game too. Dorian said that Mosley has been the guy encouraging him saying, Hey, you've been working on it. You've been practicing, go out there and, you know, do what you do. Uh, talking about his three point shot. You can uh, hear Mark him on the bench too. Mosley. There was a <laughs> moment that Tim was by himself guarding Steph or somebody on the opposite end. And you could hear Mosley on the broadcast saying by yourself, Tim. Bye. And I'm like, and I, I just know Mosley's voice. And I'm like, yeah. That's just like, that's just who he is. Uh, Draymond, 29 minutes. He had 11 rebounds, three assists, three steals, two blocks, six turnovers, three fouls, one shot attempt, a three. Yeah. One shot. <laughs> Can we get him on Dallas, though? Do we want him on Dallas? Oh, Still? yes. Yes. Still? He doesn't yes. shoot. All the no. spacing that the Mavs have been working towards, all the space that Luka gets defense though uh, would he play in crunch time yeah yeah no space no i think he wouldn't okay he would be our best defender it with with i'm playing devil's advocate but it's 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 different with draymond because he's an incredible passer and so yeah you give draymond with those KP. passes it, it, yeah it's it's like ben simmons in a way that he's an incredible passer and so you give him that space all of a sudden he has lanes to throw these passes in you can't just like step off of him so he does make up for it in that way but yeah i'd be on it if you could just merge these two teams they'd be a dynasty right like curry and luca draymond and kp <laughs> andrew wiggins no i'm just kidding uh, wiggins could carlisle turn it. andrew wiggins into harrison barnes or like Kenneth we're on Martin? the same page that doran finney smith's better than andrew wiggins right at things he's not like a better like jump shooter than wiggins but are we sure I mean, Wiggins can hit some. Like, wait, I'm not going to go that far with Wiggins. Like, he can hit some shots. He takes some bad ones, but I think the only thing I'd give him is Wiggins. Has... He's, a, he's a skilled basketball player. He's just not a great basketball player. <laughs> Skill, skilled is relative. He's he, he's had like 40 point games in this league. Dorian's never going to have a 40 point game. Put Dorian on the Timberwolves with 40 <laughs> shots. <laughs> he he was essentially on the Timberwolves his rookie year. <laughs> This is kind of similar to Maxi Aaron Gordon conversation we had a long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah, They're like so different. Yeah, he's had a forty point game. He's had a forty seven point game. Was that your microwave that just went off? Did you cook? That wasn't me. That was you. Oh, that was me. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't me. Hey, my house is. He said, "I don't think so." That is you. That's your air. No, that's, that's not your... me. That's not me. <laughs> that's that's not... you. I swear, that's not me. No, I swear, it's you. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> That's your smoke detector. Oh, hey, that's me. Sorry. I told you it's your smoke <laughs> detector. <laughs> Coming up, we'll actually talk about the Mavericks as Isaac goes and I'll do a I'll do an ad break and you go find your smoke detector and go take it down and get the battery out of it. Uh, he's going to go right now. If you're watching on YouTube, Isaac just left. Uh, but yeah, coming up, we'll get into the Dallas Mavericks a little bit more. Talk about this team. Talk about uh, just the level that Luca's hitting and his mid range shot, and how important it is. We'll get into that coming up. But before we do, let's talk about Built Bar. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're absolutely delicious. They're great, and they're pretty good for you, too. Right now, uh, we try to tell you guys, we try to tell you about Built Bar's Coconut Brownie Chunk Bar. It is now not available, sold out, completely sold out. If you're watching on YouTube, I got it pulled up right here. They got this huge red thing that says sold out because they're absolutely delicious. But there's a lot more other Built Bars that you can get into, that you can get. You can get the mint brownie, always a good option. Raspberry, the cherry barcia, the double chocolate, the cookies and cream, all really, really good bars, and they're pretty good for you too. Go use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order with Built Bar. Got mine coming tomorrow. I'm super oh, excited about it. Oh, mine's in the mail, baby. Super excited about it. And uh, so go get some of those. Go get you some Built Bars. Use the promo code LOCKED15. Also want to tell you about betonline.ag. Betonline.ag is the fastest and easiest way for you to put some money down on sports. And it is the one that we trust. You want to put some money down on the Texas Rangers? Are they playing? How are the Rangers doing? I have no, I have no context for what the Rangers are doing right now. Mm. They are a one and a half point underdog against the LA Angels. Uh, and they, you can put some money down on them if you want to. You can also click into this game right here, and you can pick the uh, the run line, the money line. Sometimes they have first five innings, stuff like that that you can do. They have all kinds of things you can do and put down some money. Let's see if they have some games right here. Lakers, three-point favorite over the Wizards. 
Uh, that would be an, that's going to be a really interesting one. It's a huge game for the Mavericks because if they lose that, then all of a sudden the Mavericks are one and a half games behind them. They have a couple other games on here, but go use the promo code lockdown, get a 50% welcome bonus for the first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Go check out Lockdown today. It's the best thing to start your morning with 20 minutes or less with the best sports coverage from all across the Lockdown Podcast Network. Subscribe and follow to Lockdown today wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into the rest of this game. And one thing that I talked about while you were trying to get your smoke detector turned off is that um, Luka Doncic has turned into a three level scorer in a way that he wasn't his rookie three D guy. I was like mm. a three and D guy, defensive player of the year candidate. He's turned into a three level scorer in a way that we just haven't seen in mm. the year in years past. This mid range shot is going to be lethal in the playoffs. It's another level. He's taken it to this post up game. He's taken it to another level than even what he had last year when he was shooting like better in the paint than Giannis was. <laughs> like, he's just taking this game to another level, hitting harder and tougher shots. Uh, We played the clip on a couple pods ago of JJ Redick on his pod, old man in the three talking about Luca and just how he hits these incredibly tough shots and how there's very few players in the world that can hit them. Like it feels like some of these shots it's Harden, it's LeBron, it's Durant. And like how many more players can hit some of these shots? No, that's, I mean, that's what separates the greats. You know, we always talk about what happens in the playoffs and how it's different than the regular stays season. in the playoffs. <laughs> what happens there stays there. <laughs> but that's what separates these greats when it comes to playoff time. And honestly, it's what separates Giannis from being in that group yet. It does. And you have to be able to have the three levels of that scoring. And, you know, when Luca is shooting it like he is now, and, you know, I, 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 last week I checked, he was at 37% from three. It might be better by now. I don't know. Um, but where he's at with that, and, I mean, he feels like he can get to the rim at ease. This is, I mean, yeah, there's hardly anybody in the league who can do that. It's literally, I mean, KD, it's LeBron. I mean, I, it, Embiid is, you know, a little Kawhi bit. Kawhi can hit some of these. Yeah, like, Kawhi shots, for sure. But- yeah. Not some of the post up turnaround fadeaway type shots necessarily, though. Like some of these shots that Luca hits, I don't know if Kawhi can. Yeah, I would still put Kawhi in that group. Yeah, um, yeah, he's up there it's... for sure. I put DeRozan in there, to be honest. DeRozan's one of those guys that can hit a bunch of shots like that. Uh, is he? I mean, we talking three levels or two levels? Because has he ever been oh, to sure. a third I'm, level? I'm just, I, was, I just got my head stuck on the mid, like the mid range, those like post up turnaround shots. DeRozan's really good at those. But yeah, you're right. He doesn't have the three at all. Yeah. That is what separates, man. That's what separates a guy like DeRozan from the rest of this group. Like, honestly, I'd put Kyrie up there. Kyrie's yeah, yeah. one of the one of the best finishers. <laughs> we just named all the Nets. <laughs> James Harden, okay. James Harden, yeah. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. But like, what? even somebody like Steph, like I love Steph, but even Steph in like the mid range, it's it's kind of difficult for him to you know to get that shot off with just his form and just how you know Kyrie gets more elevation Kyrie has a higher release Kyrie has probably a better handle than Steph so like Kyrie in the mid-range is a little bit more efficient with that but it the the point is there like there's only what five six guys who can do this at a high level and Luca's one of those guys and he's in year three it's wild and it's crazy, but it's going to take the Mavericks to another level in the playoffs. Luca, when you yeah. can score at three levels, you can't take as much away. You can almost take nothing away from you can almost take you can't take everything away from Luca. You just I have to pick take. which one you want to like give up. Yeah. <laughs> and Maxi was talking actually, Maxi was talking about this after the game. Tim Tim Cato was asking him a bunch of questions about, you know, shooting more twos because Maxi hit a couple of mid-range jumpers, which are kind of out of character for him this this season. And he asked him about shooting the mid range. And he says, well, if they're going to run you off the three point line, you have to have another option. And Luca now has all the options. Yeah. Right? I mean, is there a thing offensively that Luca can't do? He couldn't throw down that alley-oop the other day that, that Brunson tried to throw at him. Uh, yeah. He's, well, he's not as much of a high flyer, but like I, everything else he can do. The, I'm just going to sound very picky. I, I mean, we are, we're, we're being picky because we're talking about the top of the top. I just want a better free throw percentage. <laughs> free throw percentage for sure. That's that's one thing. And then the live ball turnovers, but that's like decision making. That's not a skill that 
he can't do right. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't blame turnovers on Luca because I do because some of them are really bad and really dumb. And yeah, but nobody handles the ball. I mean, you look up the I stats know, but, every single year of like who has the most turnovers in the league. It the correlation between high usage and <laughs> high turnovers. Sure. It's very, very so like you for don't. Sure. It's like you want to lower his numbers, then take the ball out of his hands. But do you want to give it to Wes Awandu every game? Then no. So I want. There's, it's just some of his turnovers are like live ball. And when we say live ball, it means the play is happening and the other team gets the ball and they go immediately into a fast break and go to the other end. Like those kind of turnovers, instead of the accidentally threw it out of bounds, accidentally threw it at the feet of a player, goes off the baseline, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. It's just the difference between live ball turnovers and dead ball turnovers are huge. And so that that's one thing. Like I wish Luca would turn it over better. <laughs> is that what I'm trying to say? I think that's what I'm trying to say. Make better turnovers. But, but no, I mean, he's at 72% from, from uh, the free throw line. I would love for that to be better. I mean, we went into the season saying, man, can you hit 80? I would love for you to hit 80, yeah. but it's also not the end of the world too. I mean, you go look at, I just pulled up LeBron's free throw percentage numbers over the you know past few years. Worse. Because I mean, yeah, I mean, this year he's at 70. And the year before that, 69. Nice. Thank you. 66%, 73%, 67%, 73%, 71%, 75 Like, he hasn't shot it over set over 70. Like, he has 78% in 08, 09. That's his highest free throw percentage for the year. So, it just goes to show you, it's not everything. Like, that. that's proven my point kind of yeah. wrong, that I want him to hit 80. So, it's, it's kind of okay. <laughs> And the guy has won a couple titles, so it's not like you can't win a title if you can't shoot 80 Yeah, just a, just a few, though. I mean, not like six or anything like that. But <laughs> but definitely more than two. That's true. Yeah, definitely. More, more than, than three. Th not yeah. one. Not two. They didn't get that one, that first one. They did not. No, they um, didn't. By the way, Luca in the clutch this season, mm. 15 of 18 from the three-point line. That's 83%. That's when you want him to hit him. I don't care the rest of the game, honestly. He can miss all of them until he gets to the clutch because <laughs> yeah. he's going to make up for it in other ways. So, uh, yeah. yeah, That's us being picky about Luca for a minute. In the set, and this conversation is more about he's so incredible and has added so much to his game at this point that he has like two weaknesses, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly. And because his defense has improved so much too, it's like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could just talk all day about Luca. I just feel like I'm just – praising him all day i mean what else can you do i mean we have to do that right like <laughs> i can't even spell things in my text messages that says like sometimes luke. like in a text oh, yeah. or luke and i mean y'all know I'm a, I'm a pastor too so sometimes i'll write out like <laughs> something like a passage in luke and it'll be luca and i'm like send it to our team or whatever it is and it's like oh, crap like my, everything all my devices auto correct to luca but I yeah agree. look at i'm you showing his luca? I'm showing his uh, his uh, shot chart from this game on YouTube if you guys are watching right now. And just look at this. like He's all over the place. Like His threes aren't all in one place. His mid-range shots aren't all in one place. It's not like he's LaMarcus Aldridge where all he can do is just go on that left block and he's just, you know, hits shots over and over from there. He's all over the place. He can hit shots from every level. It's the corners are the only place he doesn't shoot. And he hit a corner three against the, the Kings, right? It's, he can hit those. And he's just not set up in that area. But yeah, this this shot chart is wild to me. Luca, three point shots, driving left. It just feels like it's automatic. Like I I need to. I'll pull up synergy numbers on it. It's like driving left three pointers. I need to know this. It has to be a very high percentage. Yeah, that left wing that he's hit all those clutch shots from are just. It's just wild. Uh, anybody else in this game that we should give shout outs to? I'm just uh, pissed. How, uh, oh, I, how one, have we gone I've, this far? I've, I've never seen a player get tossed like this either. Ed Malloy literally walks up to Bobon and he's like, Hey, I'm picturing, like, Hey man, like that hey. was a two. So you're, you're gone. Okay. I, I know. And it, it's like, it, I've just this never hurts, seen anything. This hurts like, me more than it hurts you. Let me tell you. Right. Like I, <laughs> I'm more upset that I have to do this to you than I am actually doing it to you. Yeah, it, I just love the face that he walked up to Boban with and was just like looking at him of please yeah. don't smash me. So Boban hits Jordan Poole in the head on a like on a drive and Jordan Poole falls down really, really hard, hits his head like it just looked really bad. And if you're on YouTube, the, the thumbnail of this video is Boban leaning down and like trying to make sure that Jordan Poole is okay. And he just looked like he was uh, kissing like the sleeping, like sleeping beauty. You know I mean? <laughs> like, 
starts leaning down to like his princess and uh he like leans down make sure he's okay and then he gets up and then afterwards like boban goes up to jordan pool and they like like high five or like and then like hold hands for a second and they're talking and they're smiling and laughing and then all of a sudden ed beloy comes up to boban is like hey man like you got ejected <laughs> boban's like what me i got ejected and then he just leaves uh it reminded me though and uh, I, I went back and I was like, okay, well, how many times has Boban actually gotten uh, ejected like this? And <laughs> he has got ejected uh, another time. And it was a time that Mavs fans should remember. Maybe not, but I'm going to pull it up if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Um, a guy did, that we, the guy that we all know and love. Did he smack Dirk? Not Dirk. So tough as a big man when you're coming over to help. You're slow, out of position. You're trying to block oh, the God. shot before he gets it above his head. On the podcast, but what happens when he gets the Bobon ball up quicker than you can block the ball? Right in the you end up smacking the as he goes your opponent the in the face. Uh, when Boban was on the Clippers, so yeah. yeah. Com- it has happened before. <laughs> he smacked Salah right the, in the, the face. The Salah years are uh, <laughs> interesting years. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, Boban getting ejected, that was brutal. That that hurt. Um, it shouldn't happen. No, ever. Boban should never be ejected. Ed Malloy, sorry, you are challenging Scott Foster uh, for the worst in the league and Travis Ford. Uh, what is wrong with Tim Hardaway Jr.? Can we have that conversation real quick? Do we know where his dad's at? Where's Tim Hardaway Sr.? We need to send it all points... Um, all points bulletin on where is Tim Hardaway senior? Because we need, we need a JJ find... Barea beacon for Tim Hardaway senior. Oh, we do. It's like him doing the crossover in his golden state days. I don't know where Tim Hardaway senior has been, but, but Tim Hardaway junior has been pretty rough over this last, I don't know, couple weeks and his shot just isn't there. His shot, like after the, I didn't talk about this much in the, the post game with the Kings, but, his shot selection has just gone like way back to like first days with the Mavericks. And he's just taking these contested shots. And like, you don't have to shoot yourself out of this, you know, rut, like take good quality shots again, let the game kind of come to you in a way. And he's just doesn't seem like he's doing that. He had a stretch though to, yeah, he had a stretch tonight where he hit a few shots. Uh, the last one was kind of a heat check. He got fouled on the three. I was like, Whoa, just launching it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he he always has the green light. And, I mean, it's not like he had horrible. I mean, he shot 37% tonight, 40% from three. So it, It's more about the last couple of weeks kind of thing for him. Yeah, yeah, it's It's the stretch right now. He's, he's in an obvious slump. So, hey, get the slump out of your system right now yeah. and uh, <laughs> so he can be back on fire come playoff time. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we've already praised Dorian in this game. Trey Burke was probably the the role player to highlight. Um, you know, Willie was a plus forty one, which you know, plus <laughs> minus is not you know everything, but Willie's those bench know, units destroyed the Warriors. That's what that's saying. Yeah, for sure. JJ Redick hit his his three tonight, and J- JJ Redick hits that three, and I know Tim Hardaway goes, well, "Why can't I take that shot?" <laughs> and the rookies played, and that's why we won. Josh Green, man. Uh, I think it was Mavs draft. I think it was our friend Richard that said, is Josh Green the second best passer on the Mavericks? No. I think he is. The second best passer? Who's a better passer? He just has some He has some passes where you're like, oh, dang. Zach Lowe had a good comment on his podcast today. He said. About uh, Josh Green? He actually talked about Rondo. And he's like, you don't wow. realize the passes that are there until somebody comes on the, like somebody new comes on the team and starts throwing them. Yeah. And Josh Green, it feels like there's a little tiny, small bit of that with the Mavericks. You're like, oh, dang, he threw that pass. And he just has a little flair on it. And I think he's a good passer. I'm waiting for Luca to play with somebody in his lifetime that is an incredible passer, like a Jokic type. You know, I don't want to say Ronda, but like one of those type of guys to where Luca is getting hit with the crazy passes. Yes. And it's like he's like freaking out and stuff. I want to see that moment. I am excited for that moment, too. Anything else you want to talk about with this game? Uh, let's talk about the standings real quick, I guess, because the Dallas Mavericks are still in sixth. We're good with that. We're good with them, with them being in sixth. And uh, they're not having to play the play-in right now, which is great for the Mavericks. The Blazers are – they won, but they are still slumping, it seems. And 
Uh, they are two. The Mavericks are now two games back from the Lakers. So if the Lakers lose to the Wizards, they will be a half game closer. Lakers stretch coming up is pretty easy too. And it seems like there's some rumors, some rumblings. LeBron might come back soon. So that's kind of big for them. Mm. Um, but it seems like the Mavericks are going to play. And then if you look up to see who the Mavericks would play, the Jazz, Suns, and Clippers are all one game apart from each other. So that can still shake up a lot by the rest of the season. So we don't know exactly who the Mavericks are going to play. It seems like they're going to stay in six if they can hold on to it. And roughly, what, 10 games left? 11 games left? If my math is... 11 games left, I think. Um, 11. I think it's 11. Yeah, which is just crazy to think about. I mean, we're looking at, you know, playoff stuff and that amazing play-in tournament weekend that will be happening. You It'll know, be in, fun. You will enjoy May. it. You will enjoy it, and you'll text me and be like, I'm sorry. Everyone's saying, even Ian Eagle on the broadcast is like, so many of these games have implications now. I've, I've never once said it will not be fun. I will enjoy it. You I just sarcastically it's... said, and this play-in weekend that we will all enjoy. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, got to hand out some ribbons that weekend. That's... Congratulations, San Antonio! Woo! You get a ribbon! Somebody mentioned in the YouTube comments, they said, well, why should a, a team that's 10 games ahead of, you know, the seven seed that's 10 games ahead of the 10th seed be in the same basically in the same situation and i was like well the blazers only have two more wins than the golden state warriors who are in 10th so it's not like they're incredible like so far ahead it may happen one of these years but it's not happening this year yes yes i i think you're the strongest argument to be made for this tournament is this year i think that argument dwindles as the years go along as far as the argument for it and we don't, I don't know think- that how what's what's different between this year and another year fans because well yeah yeah just the craziness of this year i think we'll see we have seen a lot of differences in regards to the games and stuff and standings that we might not see as much this year but i mean heck last year didn't we have something even with the bubble that the wizards freaking went to the bubble and they were how many games out from like yeah it's oh the bubble i mean that was different <laughs> the, yeah but when, Wizards had 25 wins last year. <laughs> I think I would be a little bit better with it if they did the like the game thing of you have to be within a certain amount of games from this to happen. But I don't know how you pull that off every year. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm okay with it because then the seven seed has so much more, you know, motivation to try and get up to six. Hmm. Okay, I'm good with it. Uh, we'll see if I change my mind about it next year. Let's add more playoff teams. That's not what I'm saying. That's not even any remotely what I'm saying. Your slippery slope argument ends here. <laughs> add the Pelicans in. It'd be fun, right? I mean, that's no, what the Pelicans need for. to be better as a team. They have all the chances in the world and they're screwing it up. So why can't San Antonio be better and they're in ninth? Hey, just be better. Be better. Be the they are better. They're better than the Pelicans, better than the Kings. They're, they get, they got I know, but like, why, why can't we say that about them to be better for the eighth seed? I mean, we can, but like, now why, they, why, they is it, have, why does it stop they, at 10? Like, why don't we just keep going? What? Because that's just, because that's just the number that they decide. It's an arbitrary number. <laughs> why, why do you make this so complicated? I just, I like, yeah. Not what do you like? It. Okay. Well, let's have it like premier league then. And the jazz would win the mm-hmm. title this year because they won the regular season. Why do playoffs at all if the team that wins all these games? I've is never the once best argued team? for that. I like the playoffs. That's, this is the same thing. I'm saying the opposite, though. <laughs> yeah, I like the yeah, combination the of regular slope season. In the other way. No, <laughs> I like the the combination of regular season matters, but we also have the playoffs at the same time. Instead of hey, everyone's going to make the playoffs. Cool. That's not what's happening. But I know, but I'm just saying that's the... Well, then you can't the, make the argument that way. The more teams, two-thirds of the league is making a postseason playoffs, well, however you want to word it. And I no, don't you like, can't say I don't postseason like that. playoffs. Okay, postseason. Let's just leave postseason. Like, they have a postseason Two-thirds opportunity. of the league. Two-thirds of the league is making the postseason. And that's just, that's weird to me. Over ha- like, that's just wild. No, it's not that crazy. How many uh, eight? Like how it's many? It's not teams? that crazy because you just want like we just want fun. And it's like yeah, it's the fun. The whole it, point I, of the NBA is for it to be fun uh, and okay, to be yeah. enjoyable. And that's why I'm saying okay, then let's just be fine with handing out participation ribbons. Like you made a playoffs. This is fun. Yay, cool. Like 
I just like the like, hey, no, let's fully yeah. reward. Let's let's You're fully giving them an the... opportunity. Yeah. It's sure. not a participation. It's an opportunity to, to make the, the post the playoffs, the actual they've playoffs. had that all season. And it's giving these teams a reason to play and to a reason to not tank. Because their season matters a little bit more if they have a bunch of injuries. Yeah. The Warriors yeah. lost Clay Thompson and they could just be out of it and tanking at this point, but they're not, and they're actually trying. I don't know how much they tried in this game against the Mavericks, but their season should mean nothing at this point. But yeah. it doesn't. It actually has implications and it matters. I'm just looking forward to rooting for the Wizards or Bulls. Um, this is going to be a sarcastic compliment. Who could be 10 games under 500 and still be done this too long with you to know that that wasn't (laughs) going to be a serious comment. There you go, guys. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, also subscribe to our, uh, our brother channel, our sister channel. I don't know. Locked on Cowboys. Go subscribe to them too. They just hit, they just hit a thousand subs. So I don't want to say get on our level, but you guys are doing great over there. (laughs) Yeah. Go. Yeah. Listen to them around the draft. The Cowboys are great. Jerry Jones is amazing at building teams. It's funny that neither of us are Cowboys fans when we're covering, covering, covering the Mavericks. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys, appreciate you jumping on. Thanks so much for listening. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. And we'll put a link in the description for uh, Charks' story and all that. So go click on that and go check that out. Peace out. Boom. And now your moment of zen. <laughs>